Hello and welcome. My name is Trismegistus, and today we're going to be reading through, speculating about, and listening to the latest Factorio Friday Facts. Friday Facts 406 Space Age Music, posted by Albert. Before we really get into this, this is very much uh, focused on the music, as the name suggests. If that's not particularly interesting to you, then there's actually a whole load of Easter eggs in the videos as well. I'll be talking about them at the end of the video, so there'll be timestamps. Use those to skip ahead to the bit that you're most interested in, because I'm, I'm aware that not everyone is really into the music. But so if that is interesting to you, and it's interesting to me, then uh, that's what the first part of this video will be about. And then go to the end for the speculation and Easter eggs that I found. There's quite a lot. I might do a separate video. It was November of 2021 when we started conversations with Peter Wessa. I think that's how you pronounce it, I'm not sure, apologies for mangling it if so. A very talented Czech music composer to create the soundtrack for the Factorio expansion. Since then, we have been working together on the soundtrack of Factorio Space Age. This involved conceptualising and finding solutions to our not small amount of problems, and filling the expansion with quality music, which was specially designed for the best possible Factorio experience. Peter is a very special musician, because besides being a proven master of electronic music, his education and experience in the conservatory makes him capable of composing music using the full range of a classical orchestra. His modern style of going to more experimental solutions makes him very flexible creating the score of the Factorio Space Age expansion. Orchestrated music. This time though, since we are combining electronics and orchestral music, we decided to record the orchestrated parts with a real orchestra in a real studio. The difference, as you know, between a synthetic orchestra and a real one can be huge. The experience of playing the game with this soundtrack must be, at least, noticeable. Recording sessions. Recording music with a traditional orchestra is a big challenge, which requires a long process and a really complex coordination. From music directing and composing, to orchestration, coordination of all the musicians, arrangements, recordings, post-production, etc. In the case of our soundtrack, 174 professionals are involved, without counting the Factorio team. The music production company Soundsgate, which represents Peter, is taking care of this whole process for us. The recording sessions of our soundtrack have been held since November 2023 in the Sesky Ros Rosler Studios. Again, apologies for mangling that in Prague. I post you here some pictures of the first recording sessions. So yeah, it's just uh, sort of uh, pictures from the recording sessions. So uh, just a moody shot of the uh, you know on air light. Basically, that tells you when it goes red usually in these these studio booths when they're actually recording, so people know not to not to come in, etc. Uh, and then we've got a score. Uh, this is for Trombone One for Space O Two. But yes, this is just the uh, soundtrack. There are there is possibly a clue as to some stuff that's coming up here, but I'll, I'll talk about that at the end of the video. As I say, I want to focus more on the the music because I think it might get a bit lost if I'm honest. This next one then is just uh, the the actual playing basically. So it's just them them recording what looks mostly to be sort of violins and violas and that sort of thing. Um, and this is just the conductor. And then we've got more strings. We then got some wind instruments, trombones, and uh, look like cornets in the background there. But um, but yeah, so clearly a full, or well, maybe not a full orchestra, but certainly uh, brass and strings. You know, we've got some clarinets and all sorts of stuff going on there. Yeah, so clearly, you know, a full orchestra. It feels almost like, I don't know how to phrase this, it's like Factorio is like levelling up. It's obviously been a very successful game, particularly for a, an indie game. I'm just listening to the, the recording sessions, but it feels a bit like it's going, you know, because this is movie soundtrack territory, you know? I'm pretty sure that the original soundtrack was recorded just by Daniel James Taylor, who, you know, mentioned him later on, but uh, I'm pretty sure he kind of did it himself, basically. So there is a lot of, it's a lot of atmospheric noises, but there's, um, I can't remember what you call the instrument. It's like a, it's almost like a steel drum type instrument where you tap on particular areas and it makes particular sounds. That's used quite extensively, but that's a single, you know, single person type instrument able to create that. So it sort of reflects to me the scale of the game shifting from this small thing that a handful of developers, you know, put together basically to a very successful indie game where they can afford to do a, a full orchestral orchestral soundtrack. So so yeah, it's all all sort of. Um, I don't know, I got this weird feeling of being proud of the game. It's, that's a very strange thing to say, but it does just feel like, you know, the kind of the game has seen the success that I, I think it deserves, I should say. Yeah, and I, I assume this is the composer, but obviously just going through uh, the soundtrack, listening to the tracks as they go through, getting feedback, etc, etc. These are sound dampening things, basically, so just to cut down on ambient noise when you're recording. And yeah, just the recording sessions. Cool. 
don't have a lot to say about these, but but yeah. The current soundtrack will stay as the Nowvis soundtrack. The style of the Factorio 1.1 soundtrack was already given by our dear Daniel James Taylor. Petter had to adapt his work to continue with Daniel's Nowvis soundtrack. That doesn't mean that the expansion of the soundtrack won't add new colours and textures to the game, totally the contrary. The new content of the expansion, as its name says, expands the soundscape of Factorio to new dimensions. In general, what the soundtrack tries to do is to accompany the player throughout all the mental processes required by the game, to focus the attention at the time of designing the factories and its logistics. So, the music should create a balanced and relaxed atmosphere to allow the player to concentrate. The music is not decoration, it helps the player to have a better immersive experience and also to visualise what is not shown on the screen. The Factorio motif. A constant in the entire soundtrack, and I'm adding Daniel's work also, is the Factorio motif. I'm sure you have ta it tattooed on your brain already. Do you remember the melody that sounds when loading the game? Yes you do. Well, Petter developed an entire universe based on these couple of notes. Okay, so if there is anyone that hasn't heard the, the motif that they're talking about, uh, it's the one that plays when you start the game. That one there, basically. And as he says, it's just a couple of notes, and the idea is that that a constant strand that carries through is something that movies have used extensively. I guess one of the simplest ones is is the Jaws theme, where that you know couple of notes, da -da, that is the shark basically. And the idea is that that motif is used repeatedly when the shark is is on. Well, it's not necessarily on screen. A lot of it. So that's part part of the point in it, but. When that shark is active or there, that little motif comes in. But what you then do, what composers then do, is like expand on it or incorporate it into other pieces of music or, or what have you. And it just, it's something that your brain, your subconscious sort of latches onto and hears, but you don't necessarily consciously hear it. So you have little stabs of the, 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 the music or what have you in other tracks, or say those note patterns or that, that way of playing it, etc., just to bring that back again. I say it's widely used in movie soundtracks in particular because you tend to have a motif associated with a character or maybe a situation or an action or something like that. And so when you repeat it, the audience kind of knows instinctively, oh, well, that's that character or... You know that, that this is they are the focus of this scene basically and say so, so yeah it is a common thing but the idea is basically that little stab of music those few, few notes are being expanded upon used repeated structurally or specifically to give the game a co coherent and consistent uh, kind of soundscape basically factorio engine constraints we don't have a way for the engine to tell the music system what is happening in the game. In other words, the music system has no idea of the, if the player is in the middle of a battle, destroying biter nests, or meticulously placing transport belts to satisfy the needs of a growing factory. This fact is greatly limiting the creative solutions at the time of composing the score. Imagine the player quietly pipe placing pipes to simply connect two machines, and suddenly there is a super epic battle music in the background. This would create a silly situation, and we don't want that. The solution that we decided to take is, instead of trying to illustrate the action itself, we better go for a description of the landscape in a more ambient solution. The atmosphere of the planet and its nuances, the mood and its variations. The music must be neutral in a way of not having big emotive peaks, but on the other hand it should be rich and dynamic, otherwise it would become dull. So, the balance between neutral and expressive is something very important to control. Now I think They've, well, they've kind of explained something that... So I absolutely adore the Factorio soundtrack. And I've kind of thought about why, because I have a lot of problems with games soundtracks. It's something I struggle with, essentially, because I find I get overload, basically. If a game has... one of the, Some of the worst games for this are RPGs, where there is never a moment where there is not sound in a lot of... You know, not music, rather, in a lot of RPGs. And... Particularly something like, I, you know, not least of all because there's the TV series, so it's front of mind. But Bethesda Fallout games, you tend to get very, like, so when combat starts, it switches into combat music. And I fi can find it very jarring, not least of all because sometimes you can enter combat and you don't actually know there's an enemy there. So it like ruins the surprise of a surprise attack effectively. You know, when some enemy turns up and attacks you from behind, you know, you know, you're already looking for them because the music's gone into 
as outside Xbox would say, it's, the music has gone musicy. Or you go to a boss fight and it, you know, has a particular soundtrack to the boss fight. I find all of that stuff very artificial. And as I say, I also get a bit of sensory over overload, basically, of, of kind of too much music continuously is just not for me. But the basic point I'm, I'm sort of getting towards, and I have discussed this lots of times on stream, if you've ever, you know, seen any of my streams, but I, what I like in the Factorio soundtrack is it's all, like, thematically similar and it's not jarring in a sense so there isn't really a combat music piece in in factorio you know in terms of what plays during the game there's a lot of very atmospheric and it's a very and i know this isn't for everyone but it's like a sort of a lot of it's quite gloomy and <laughs> which fits the, the theme of the game to me and that you know that's why one of the reasons i love it but also it's discrete soundtracks so you, you hear a music, you know, you hear a, a song, basically, that lasts, whatever, they last three or four minutes or what have you. Uh, some of them quite short and stuff. In fact, there'll probably be some playing in the background because I tend to just drop the music in as like a background sound occasionally just to break break things up on the videos. And that's why, because it just fits in, you see. It's just, it's proper ambient background music. You can listen to it as proper, you know, ambient music as well, but it doesn't have that jarring thing, as I say, of like, this is suddenly the combat music and wow, 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 it's all mad and, and noisy. You don't tend to get, and this is one of the things I'm a little worried about with this update, you don't tend to get these massive transitions because it's all just of a, of a type, of a, of a similar style. Because you're always just out in the wilderness in Factorio, even if you put concrete down. You're not in a building, you know, you're just, you're just stuck concrete in the floor. Um, so it's all very similar, all very coherent together. And as I say, I particularly like that it'll have a big period of no, of just, just the you know, the background noise, the, the ambient noise that there is, the wind and all that. And then a song will come in and it will fade in and plays for a couple of minutes and then goes away. And that is a particular thing I love with the soundtrack. And I'm assuming that this will be the same. But they're kind of explaining why that happens, because there is nothing in, you know, the reason those fall out, you know, the, the combat music kicks in is because there's a flag in the engine that says, now in combat, the music system basically says, oh, that flag's gone. Now I start playing the combat music. And as I say, that isn't there in Factorio. They don't have that. Although the way it's written, I don't know that they're not implying that they might not might not have added it. But basically the idea is it's just all the tracks have to be something you could listen to at any stage of the game. So they have to work in combat. They have to work in building. They have to work while you're traveling. They have to work, as we're getting here, across five different planets or space or, or what have you, and just be consistent to that sort of biome, basically. There are four new planets plus space, so we will have five unique soundscapes. That's a bit of a title, isn't it? Every planet or surface has its own mood, shapes and spirit. The player should feel on which surface the action is focused, without having to look at the graphics. While this is a very subjective matter, sometimes it's, it is clear for some and sometimes not that much, but you get the point. So yeah, they're just explaining there that the different planets are going to have diff uh, different themes to them. They're going to have different styles, you know, but those are going to be consistent for where, where you are. So on that, you know, um, score sheet, when it had the list of soundtracks, those soundtracks are, you know, according to the, the planet type and, you know, the instruments that are playing, how it's done, you know, the style of the music is going to be consistent to that planet across the entire planet. So I, I, I come back to it again, but on the existing soundtrack, you've got the couple of extra bonus tracks of, the, say, the, the menu music and the, the trailer music. And if you imagine those playing during the game, they'd be quite jarring because they're very, very different style to the, the main, you know, soundtrack that plays during the game. So that's what they're saying, basically. There will be consistency within the, the style of each planet, but they won't bleed between each other. Now, one of the things that's interesting there, and it's a really weird point that I'm thinking of, but we know we're getting these, like, super expanded remote views. So if I'm spending, like, you know, 20 minutes fiddling about on Folgora when I'm on Volcanus, which soundtrack is it going to play? Because, as it says, the sound music track has no real context of where you are, but it must have some context of where you are, in the sense that they must be able to tell it where you are, because otherwise, if you've got the Folgora soundtrack and you've got the Volcana soundtrack, it's got to switch between the two as you move planets. So when you go to space, there's a separate space soundtrack. When you go down to your planet, that's a separate soundtrack as well. So it must at least be able to switch between those. And I'm assuming that happens in a fairly, you know, like fixed way. So that if I'm on Volcanus, the only tracks that as in, you know, me, the player that's on Volcanus, the only tracks that we'll be able to play are the Volcanus tracks, even if I'm fiddling about on Alvis, Folgora, 
all these other, or doing something in space, it won't play those soundtracks. It'll just play the Volcanus one. So that's a bit of a weird esoteric point, but, but it is interesting. At the beginning of the project, we had to work almost blindly, because none of the graphics or gameplay were fully designed, just ideas. Which is what anyone needs to start anything. But now it is different. With all the work done by the team, we can start showing little tastes of how things come together. All the music excerpts and visuals presented in this post are works in progress. The videos are meant to be proof of concepts. I made them to easily visualise all these concepts that I am talking about. I hope you enjoy them. Now as I said earlier, there's a lot of little east well, not a lot necessarily, but quite a few little in easter eggs in these videos. I'm not going to talk about them as we go. I'm going to focus on the soundtrack side of things and we'll talk about that and then I'll put some I'll put all the stuff that is me spotting things in the videos at the end. If you see any other things, because there are lots in these, I think, or potentially there are, there's like hints about how gameplay mechanics work, which are a bit deep dive-ish and I may not be able to work through in this video. But if you see anything that you think is interesting, then do shout. I might well do a, a follow-up video because I say there are lots, lots of little things that I think are interesting and a lot of them I don't really understand what they mean. But, but yeah, so we'll get into all of that. That'll be all be at the end of the video though. Space. The space platform is the most tricky one because it has two modes, stationary in space and in motion. So we decided to cover both cases with two complementary elements. Firstly, we use a spacey atmosphere, obviously, with a bit of synth electronics trying to describe how it feels floating in the cold void of the universe. Not much fun, I would have thought. We use a rhythmic bass for the feeling of the platform movement, the powerful thrusters impulsing the big mass of metal, like a space ferry, slow but unstoppable. For all these videos I am going to pop them out because the actual video is a bit big, bigger than I'm showing and I'll pop my headphones on so that I can listen along. We will literally listen to the entire thing and I'll say nothing and then we'll go back and say look at things and I'll say the speculation about what's visually shown I'll probably chop at the end. Okay, so this is the first one. Um, obviously, you'll have to excuse my big big head being in the corner, but um, but yeah, so this is the space theme. I say we'll play it through, all the way through, um, and then we'll kind of speculate about what we can both hear and see. Okay, yes, yeah, so I'm going to turn the sound down a bit so that I don't drown myself out. But I do need to balance that up a little with uh, still being able to hear it. So there's a lot of other sound in this as well. There's a lot of sound effects. Um, but I think you can kind of hear that, that kind of um, sweeping orchestral sound. It's using a lot of space stuff, you know, because it's the majesty of the universe and the galaxy, etc, etc. Um, and it also has, I don't know if you can hear it, there's like a, a throbbing sort of bass beat to it, which is the bass they're talking about, which I suppose is meant to convey that fact that you're on this gigantic platform and, you know, um, a lot of films you'll have you know, seen with space things, they have that. It's based really on ships, like you know, real ships, where the engine thrumming away you know, causes the entire ship to vibrate, so every room has a, you know, a sort of a, a pulsing vibration that you can kind of hear in the background and that's just subtle underneath that sort of 
um, very rhythmic, say, bass note to it, say, with a lot of sort of high. Um, I think they're mostly, you know, artificial, basically. So I don't. It sounds a bit stringsy, but I think it's mostly sort of keyboard, um, you know, synth, synth synth music. I really love it, basically. So my overall reaction to that is, you know, great. Fits in very well with the sort of current style for the Nalvis soundtrack. It feels on all those videos the the soundtrack is clearly quite loud and obviously you're able to adjust the soundtrack yourself so I, I would know that it does feel a bit overwhelming for me from that point of view i do hope that it is again con constrained sounds they've not gone too mad and you end up with this continuous sound background again that's a personal thing but i i like that it's distinct you know sounds basically so distinct music tracks that have beginning and end uh, and that there's a pause between them and and they can come in and give you some atmosphere and then then fade out again so i really hope that that's what they're continuing and it doesn't end up being just this continuous background drone of music that overloads me and i have to turn it off because that would be a great shame volcanus dark oppressive hot and heavy but also wonderful. We found it very coherent and appropriate to use long chords of brass instruments. These are pointed to the magnificence of this fantastic landscape, which contrasts to the hazardous volcanoes and lava. Again, just kind of going to let this play through, and uh, we can listen through, and, and then I'll talk about what how, you know what I think of the music, um, and then we'll do. I'll move any speculation to the end. I don't think it's too much on this one, but, but yeah. Okay, so um, I would say this is the most epic of the ones, in my opinion. It sort of it feels like an actual soundtrack to an actual. I'm going to turn this down again as well, so it doesn't drown me out. An actual film, you know. So it's this is like the intro, you know. This is you're going into the bad guys. Like it's like a Bond Bond thing, basically, where you're sort of going into the bad guys. You know, volcano hollowed out volcano base, as they always seem to have. And uh, you know, this is the approach to it, and you're seeing all the, you know, all the landscape, etc. I cannot tell you how excited this is making me to play this this expansion. <laughs> it honestly can't come soon enough. But yeah, it's a lot of brass, long brass notes. Um, there's a a thing that basically, uh, it, heavy use of brass is meant to like appeal to your emotions, um, and use of strings is meant to appeal to your head basically um, obviously it mixes the two up but again sort of lowing long play emotions but it's basically the the brass is and you know um, uh, strings tend to be more um, thinking and, and contemplating sort of thing so it all re works really well but say it's this it's real you know um, sort of bomb theme you know uh, feel to it or, I mean, another one might be some, some nature documentary. You could well imagine this playing. So it's a bit too dramatic for that sort of thing, but you could well imagine it playing as lava flows down the, the you know, exploding mountain, um, exploding volcano. Um, 
So yeah, so I say another one, massive thumbs up on this one for me. I think this is probably my favorite of the new pieces. Again, I would just sound a tiny note of caution that I, it doesn't feel like a short track. But yeah, big thumbs up for this as a, an actual song, actual you know, piece of music. Bolgora. The main theme in this area is electromagnetism. We are aiming for more electric sounds. Pater made lots of experiments uh, with the sound of electricity, like tapping an audio jack with his finger and recording rhythms with it, then manipulating it for use in the compositions. The excerpt shown in this video illustrates it quite well. Yeah, again, just I'm going to you know play it through, uh, we'll listen to it, and then I'll come back and speculate about the music, or give you my impressions of the music, and then we'll speculate about what we can see, which is going to be a little difficult on this one because it's very dark and, and very difficult to see. Okay, so unlike the other ones we've heard, and I'll be totally honest, I'm not as keen on this. I'm not the biggest fan of electronic music, full stop. Um, I mean, I don't mind it, and there's lots of tracks, you know, that I think are amazing that are electronic music, but as a general thing, it's not usually my cup of tea, so this isn't, you know, my type of music. But uh, can you hit... So there's obviously, like, several layers to the music. There's, like, a... A fairly continuous sort of drone there's like a odd sort of tapping noise but there's also something that sounds like voice okay it's very subtle and it may not, i'm leaving it loud for that reason but it's like you know when you have radio chatter and it's like you know kind of in the background or you can't quite hear it or you know those sorts of you know it's difficult to explain but it's sort of you know, like a TV is on in the other room or something like that, and you know, the doors are closed and you can't really hear it, but you can hear, you know, that sort of talking, but you can't tell what's being said, etc., etc. There's that sort of. That's going on with it as well. The other thing I would say that I'm not keen on on this, I'll be honest, is it's not a, how to phrase it, like a nice repeating rhythm. I don't mean just, you know, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, but it's kind of that, you know, the tappy noises. It's like a horror movie thing. One of the tricks they play in, in horror movies is that where you're expecting, you know, a rhythm of, you know, drum beats particularly, they'll do like a random cymbal crash or something like that. It's quite a cheesy trick to be honest with you, but they'll have a, a random noise that it, it's in, you know, in the appropriate beat place, but you know, it's not going to repeat every four beats or every six beats or whatever, whatever's in the, you know, the, the you know, particular beats in the bar as it were. Um, and so it, you know, it gives a, it's like disquieting. It's a sort of jarring. It's, you know, uh, puts you on edge, that type of thing. And the problem with that is that that's probably, for me, a bit too much, you know, because it's not happy music, <laughs> music. Because, you know, you're an alien that's crashed on a planet that's full of these bugs that are trying to kill you, and you've got no family, no friends, you, you can maybe never get home. You know, it's not meant to be a nice, 
soundtrack in that sense you know it's oh my god i'm you know on this planet that i'm never getting off type of thing and so i think maybe this steps a bit too far in the this planet is scary now it makes sense in that the planet goes really dark and it's then full of lightning flashes and you know it's scary in and of itself and like that that drone it feels more like horror music which i'm not sure if that's quite the tone i would want One of the things I can't work out, you see that you know the tapping noise. I don't is that meant to be the spider transfer? I don't think it is. I think it's part of the soundtrack. But it is difficult to tell. And also that I think that's gonna be a noise, you know, that backgroundy someone talking noise could be really quite distracting because as people, you know, as humans, we have this tendency to focus in on um, human voices because obviously that's you know something you want to hear amongst the din because someone's trying to warn you something or what have you that you focus in on that sound that's uh you know your, your, your brain your audio system filters in onto that particular frequency it's why you know music is tends to be in a particular register and that sort of thing because it's the human voice register so if you have that noise talking in the background that could get a bit more Obviously, I say these are all amped up. These are all much louder than, than they're going to be. I'm actually going to turn it down now. Because hopefully, you've heard that in the soundtrack. And if not, go and go and watch it properly. I'm actually wondering. Now I've said that. It could be the Spidertron, because the Spidertron does make that noise. If it's the Spidertron, then I'm a lot happier. It's just I can't I can't hear it making it noise that noise then. So yeah, if it's the Spidertron, because the Spidertron does make that blue, 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 sort of a noise. If it's the Spidertron and it's not part of the soundtrack, then this gets more of a thumbs up from me, although as I say, it's still not really my cup of tea. But if it's part of the soundtrack and it's there all the time, that will be quite annoying for me. I'd say as a piece of music, a piece of atmospheric music, it, it's okay. It's, I say it's not really my cup of tea. I don't know that this is really what kind of I want from a Factorio soundtrack. But, you know, I think I can take one planet that's um, not, because the, the next track that's coming up is, is pretty awesome for me as well. But I don't actually know I'm going to play that one because there's nothing to show you. The other two planets... In the future, we will explain more about the other planets. For now, these are undisclosed subjects, but I can't resist showing a little bit more, this time without graphics. Listen to this track and imagine a remote and unexplored planet full of... Okay, so obviously I haven't got anything to show you with this one. Um, so I am going to set the track going uh, and maybe just talk over it. It's quite long, it's eight minutes. So this first section, what I would say is it feels... Now, I'm obviously being very coloured by what we've all speculated about um, the Bacchus planet being, you know, we just seen in the first bit of speculation that maybe there isn't a Bacchus, maybe it's something else. Um, but it feels very organic, this music. It feels like... If you know the film Bambi, and this is a very weird reference to, to use, but the song uh, Plip, Plip, Plop, Little April Showers, it feels like that sort of water hitting, you know, um, a greenery type type of thing. Another thing it evokes to me is um, skittering legs, basically. It doesn't um, necessarily evoke it in a like aggressive, nasty way like the biters, which is interesting. 
but the sort of you know skittering of feet uh, of like you know animals moving along that sort of pattering noise is is another if i think it works to me as well as more um more generally sort of flowing water so some sort of you know uh stream flowing down a a river or you know maybe coming out of a a, a small um what do you call them uh water waterfall basically something like that or a rapids or something like that it's not aggressive enough for rapids really Eight minutes of just someone, of watching someone just listening to something. It's thrilling, thrilling YouTube content. Yeah. But it doesn't sound industrial. It doesn't sound harsh. It doesn't sound, you know, aggressive as such. There's that kind of underlying bass that's maybe, you know, disquieting, maybe, I don't know. But I can imagine this playing, you know, in a film over an ant colony, you know, of, of like animals moving around, or as I say, water flowing down a, a stream. tapping sound like on on now on now this as well which again if you're going for motifs and things like that you know that pan noise if that is you know the the now this theme as it were to ha if you've got a planet that Bacchus that is organic you know now has got greenery on it Bacchus has got greenery so maybe reusing that is a, a way of giving that sort of feeling see a different sort of tone coming in there the string you know the sort of they're not strings really but the sort of electronic uh, is sort of taking over a bit I should say again on this one I do like this one of the you know samples we've got the only one I was I'm not keen on is the Falgora um, as I say I if it's not the Spidertron, things suddenly get a bit more urgent. You can almost imagine that being the, you know, the biters spotting you as the the enemy and suddenly going from moving from doing going about the business, they're suddenly in attack mode and coming towards you as a. A big sort of horde of of animals rushing towards you. Much more dangerous, much more ominous. say if that was the biters attacking I'm, I'm doing a lot of it like hidden speculation here and that I'm speculating that Bacchus is going to be the main like combat planet um, and that therefore there's going to be a lot more biter types on there and so this is you know the type of music you would have as these biters you know attack you and hoard off the oh sorry um, you know, hold them back basically kill them all off and then it all goes a bit more calm again 
Um, but with sort of underlying subtle you know, threat, basically. Those, those sort of sweeping string noises are again a bit evocative of the, both the space and the, the Volcanus soundtracks. Of course, it, it, this isn't this, you know there are two other planets, so it, it might not be it might be that this isn't Bacchus at all. This is the ice planet. Um, what's it called? Um, can't remember. But the ice planet, basically. Just fading, fading down, I guess. I say I'm not. I, I'll just put this up, and you know, you'll see it uh, as is. But I say <laughs> these are a little difficult ones to uh, to do as YouTube videos because you're perfectly capable of going and just listening to this. So I don't know if there's anything at the end here. Silence. I mean, this this is the part that reassures me that we are getting songs that. I mean, it could just be, you know, they wanted to show a sample and, you know, wanted it to just sort of end, you know, in a thing. And it does ramp up at the beginning and stuff. And that could just be just for this example. But it does make me a bit more hopeful, as I say, that we are getting distinct songs again that, you know, will come and go as, as you're playing through the game. I keep banging on about that, don't I? But I say it's kind of my pet peeve with or the issue I have with a lot of game soundtracks. So, yeah. Over five hours of soundtrack. Every surface of the game plays around one hour of music. That means that we have to play five hours of soundtrack plus one hour of Nalvis. Next week, we will speak about some techniques that we've developed to not only cover this amount of time, but also surpass it. What's next? Now we have all the demos and recordings of the orchestrated parts. We don't yet have the final mixes, only a few of Peter's premixes. Every step in the process produces changes in the track, normally for the better. We are also starting to see in a better shape the graphics and the gameplay. I think that means all together basically, so I think maybe that means that the graphics gameplay are all sort of starting to come together. So I'm going to put all this material in the engine before the final mixes in order to test it and get feedback. In other words, they're sort of getting, you know, along with the graphics, the gameplay, the final, you know, close to final versions are there in the game. So they're going to add the soundtrack stuff in, even though it's the early versions, you know, it's the demos and recordings rather than the final mixes and see how it all plays together. See what it feels like to play on Full Goal or what it feels like to play on Volcanus, etc, etc. I think that's what they're saying. I wasn't quite sure what, what that meant, but I say I think that's my what they're, what they're getting at. I'm quite sure that we will be able to fine tune the entire soundtrack in a way that pays off and all the energy Peter and everybody involved put in to such a crazy project. Stay tuned. As always, orchestrate your thoughts at the usual places. Uh, okay, so this section of the video, welcome if you've skipped ahead, I don't blame you, you know, not everyone's into soundtrack and music and stuff. Um, this section of the video will be all of the more visual elements of the speculation collected from when I was, because I, I, I did, I just did them in, in situ, but in such a way that I've chopped them out and put them all at the end here. So we'll basically run through all of the speculation about what I've seen on the, the videos. I am 100% sure there is more that I've missed things. Uh, if I have, 
please do let me know in the, the comments. It'd be love to, lovely to see what you've spotted that I haven't seen or maybe you've seen mentioned on Reddit or Discord or what have you. I'd love to you know, get your uh, thoughts as well as to what you think's going on in some of these, particularly for the Folgora one. I say that that will come up in quite a bit of time, but basically I can't really tell what's going on in the Folgora one, but there's clearly a lot of detail there that we might be able to work out. So if you've got ideas of what's going on, please do let me know. Now, I don't know if these are um, how these I, I don't know Czech. I don't know the language, basically. So I don't know exactly what's being being said here. This looks like a schedule, though. So it looks like the morning session of, uh, you know, as I don't know what these means, but the morning session, uh, they're recording Volcanus and Aquila, Aquilo rather, uh, nine and five, which says, yes, you know, if there's nine there. Maybe there are actually nine on each planet or something like that. We then got the afternoon session and I, I, this is too blurred for me to be able to read it, but I think if you blow it up, so I'm assuming that this is space. It looks more like science to me, if I'm honest. So, you know, there could be more other theming, but this is presumably another of the names of the planets. It doesn't seem to tie up to the name we've been speculating about. So this was the, the decode someone did using AI, I think. And basically, as you can see, uh, you know, we've got now this Volcanus, Bacchus, Fogora, Aquilo, and something that was unclear. So this could be whatever the unclear one is. That's one of the options. Another option is that maybe Bacchus isn't Bacchus, uh, that actually it's whatever that is. It doesn't look long enough, if I'm honest, for either of those. Uh, this is also their... And you'll have to forgive me slightly. I have got a bit mixed up, but I don't think we had confirmation that Aquilo was one of the planets. I think this was just still in the speculation territory, but this appears to be confirmation that Aquilo is one of the planets. Or at least it was the name they were using while they were recording the soundtrack or bits of the soundtrack. As I say, to me, that looks like science rather than space, but you know, which Certainly what I would say is that if, if that is space, then whatever that is, is exactly the same length. Uh, interestingly, it seems to start with either what could be like a G or a Q maybe. But I say that doesn't seem to tie up with these previously revealed or previously guessed at names. So, don't know. There is, of course, the possibility that, you know, for example, if you've got the Factoria soundtrack yourself at the moment. It has several sort of bonusy tracks, you know, like one for the menu music. There's one that goes on the, um, what do you call it? Like the video, yeah, like the trailer, I guess, the teaser trailer. And then there's another one they had that went under a sort of an explainer video they did. So there could be, you know, these could be bonusy tracks or something like that. It does clearly say eight there though. So there are clearly a lot of them, but you know, this looks more like Gleeter or something like that. It, it what I would say, you know, Bacchus and Volcanus are in this picture very similar lengths and that word is definitely a lot shorter than Volcanus. So are we all completely wrong and it's not Bacchus and it's something else? Um, or is it this this hidden one here? The thing I would say though in this, this blurb here, it's of a similar length to Bacchus so you wouldn't think that was it either. But you never know. I mean you, obviously you got differences with font sizes and all that sort of stuff. But, but yes, that was... Um, the first thing I kind of spotted in the speculation side of things. Okay, so looking at this from the, the visual point of view, the I say this is more the um, speculation about what's going on. The first thing to note here, these appear to have had a little bit of a glow up. I think they've they've tweaked the graphics and they made them a bit more um, visually detailed. They don't I don't remember them being quite so detailed in in the, the version we saw before. Might be wrong about that, but um, but yeah. We can see, I don't know if it comes out with the contrast and what have you, but there are different, there are two already two different types of asteroid on screen here. We've got this one, which is clearly the metallic asteroid that they've talked about. Um, and this, I don't know if you can see it to be honest with you, but in the middle here, there is a black asteroid, which is clearly, clearly that coal um, carbon asteroid they talk about. Uh, I was hoping that one, there's a tiny one that goes, but it goes behind it here. Um, but yes, so there are these extra tiny so there's another one here. Again, I don't know if that's that's visual, visual on the screen. One of the things I would say in this, and I don't know if it's like constrained to where the 
asteroid belts are, for example, and it's maybe, I say, it's hopefully a belt type system where you go through a lot of asteroids and then there's nothing, go through a lot of asteroids and then there's nothing. Um, there's a lot of dust. You know, there's a lot of visual sort of dust on the screen. So I think it's a bit much, if I'm honest, if it's all like that all the time. But if it's just constrained to the asteroid belts, that would make some sense. Uh, we then come in and we see the amazing graphics of the thrusters, which we've seen before. This beautiful um, flame that it does, uh, you know, the blue fading into purple um, with its sort of orange, you know, burning in the middle there. We then come up here. Now, this, we'll, we'll leave that till later, but that's a new thing and is a really intriguing little reveal. I believe these are the um, cargo bay things they talked about. They have to be connected to this, which is the central hub. This does appear now to be the final graphics. The last time we saw this, it kind of wasn't the final graphics. The other thing I noticed is that this appears to be some sort of organic like thing on the platform i didn't really get what was going on here because you know we've seen the platform which is this gray you know borg like sort of you know um te you know like block type style of thing but here we have some sort of like organic spludge or something or it's almost like the creep on the uh, planet so i really don't know what that is it could just be a visual artifact, you know, it does say it's work in progress, maybe some error that happened because, you know, it thinks it's the planet and it's trying to overlay the creep on it or something like that. I don't think it is. It's not actually that similar to the creep, but it does look like some sort of organic thing. So is there some mechanism in the game where our platforms can become infested or can they be attacked by biters? Are there biter asteroids floating around that, you know, crash into the platforms and suddenly they've got to deal with biters on them or something like that perhaps one of the types of asteroids is more organic and you know that that's where it's crashed into it and it's just left some residue or something like that but say so it was very interesting that you had this sort of organic like mess on the on the platform there are a lot of turrets on this um so we've got laser turrets and this is the back of the platform um, so we've got the gun turrets. It's clearly important to protect your platforms, basically. We have a whole bunch of combinators here, which are doing some kind of less than, greater than check. But as I say, I think these are all the um, like uh, cargo bays that extend the amount of storage that the, the hub uh, has. We see quite a lot of pipes going around here and storage tanks. Uh, these are the fuel production system. So we know that there's some sort of blue fluid and some sort of orange fluid that combine together to make the thruster fuel for your thrusters so that's not new as such as we move up here we see that we have a nuclear power plant that's that's fueling the platform or powering the platform basically it doesn't look to me like it's kicked in right now it does appear to kick in later but you can see here that it's got some uranium fuel canisters being uh, put on the, the thing uh, these are all controlled by some sort of uh, logic system here, which I assume is doing some sort of power check so that because uh, at the moment in the base game, you'll find a lot of people and a, lot, and a few threads on, on Reddit. Basically, they're advocates for using steam storage to control your nuclear power. Um, and a lot of people saying basically that that's kind of pointless because there's so much uranium on the planets and you get so much nuclear for, fuel once you've got Coverex in particular, that it doesn't really matter if you're wasting a bit of heat from your from your nuclear power plants. I'm one of the latter. I, I sort of just don't bother controlling it. It's not, not really any, any point. But if you think about it, if you're going to use nuclear power on your space platform, being conservative with your fuel is probably a sensible thing to do. So there's a, a good use for um, circuit networks. We can also see on the corner here, we've got some of these new combinators. Uh, these are the, I can't remember what they're called, if I'm totally honest, without looking it up, and I'm not going to bother doing that. But these are the ones that allow you to do, do like um, stacking, basically, of, of uh, lists, essentially. Um, so there's several of these on the platform uh, that are being used to do something or other. We have quite a lot of the um, cargo extenders here, and that makes sense because this is a gigantic platform. This is a big boy. It's clearly intended for bulk storage. Uh, but I am assuming with lots and lots of the thrusters on, which we'll eventually see it has, uh, it is still able to, to move at a fair speed. One of the things that is interesting on those thrusters is that 
they don't they're not continuous even though when we see a lot of these fluids knocking about there's lots of fluids in the pipes so i'm wondering if they're maybe being controlled in some way by the um you know this log logic network that it's it's not burning through all of its its fuel in order to to move um, so it will be interesting how much we have to control fuel burning basically which is not something you can do in trains they just burn the fuel they've got but it sounds seems like platforms based on that might be a controllable thing of, of the burn rate of the fuel maybe i don't know it might be interesting we do see lots of things being put into so there's chemical plants here obviously and it's showing flipped chemical plants so these you see that sort of bulbous you know storage you know vessels that has on the the um, uh, chemical plants that's on the right here and on the left here so that's uh, confirmation of flipped chemical plants which we knew about already there is also this here okay now is that not the eyeballs of a some sort of monster maybe i'm just seeing things but it looks to me like well, firstly, that it's the other part of the organic thing that was down the bottom here. OK, and it looks bitery. It looks like it's some biters, which is weird. I, I say that I don't know what's going on there at all, because, you know, is it and it also looks like decayed or it's, you know, desiccated or something like that. So what is going on? Is this our first new clue of the actual new biters in the game? Uh, because it does also look like it could be some biters that got killed, you know, normal biters that got killed. And they're just these are the court. What happens to corpses in space? But as I say, how would co how would biters get into space at the moment? We know they're planet based. We know the space platforms don't come down to planets or maybe they do. Um, but the two are not mixed. So how have we got something organic, something biterish on a platform and and that's dead basically so what's going on there basically is the question again we see a lot of inserters a lot of combinators and this is what i was saying earlier on if you've got any clues as to you know if you can work out what's actually going on here because also showing us you know the whole monitoring the belts thing again which they just recently introduced so yes yeah, so if you've got any clues as to what <laughs> Well, the actual process is going on here is I'd, I would love to hear it. But yes, this is obviously water coming through, you know, to power these uh, just, um, you know, heat exchangers with a couple of um, heat turbines on them to generate the power. We then say a lot, a lot more of these guys. These are the same ones with the. So you see the red there, uh, the sort of eyeball-y thing. And then that's it's obviously that's the back. So this is the, the thing here. Uh, we've also got a solar panel on the side so clearly there's some value in having solar on a platform i was that's one of the things i was speculating about because uh, it would seem to make sense to have multiple power generation on your platform because if you run out of nuclear fuel this thing is dead in the air in the water or dead in space basically so having some solar on that can just give it a little bit of power to do what it needs to do not get you know killed by asteroids make some more ammo then that would make some sense I say this is a big platform it has a lot of the grabber arms on it it has a lot of gun turrets to kill asteroids coming in and uh, these are all hooked up certainly the, the grabbers are all hooked up to the circuit network so it's clearly doing something with logic around the um, asteroid arms these are outputting here onto a belt um, and then it's going into this crusher and the crusher it seems is then outputting somewhere here i think it's a little difficult to tell what the directions are. It could be that this is both because this this these inserts here are on a belt. So they're picking up from a belt, basically the green belt, the new belt. I'm not so I wasn't 100 percent sure what was outputting and what was inputting. We're getting this thing again where they're both putting into and taking out of crushers in such a way that you can put it back into the crusher. So I am absolutely convinced now that there is some mechanic that gives us like bonus amounts of uh, like we can re-crush things basically so you put a piece in it crushes it and then it can take the same piece out and re-crush it so it's effectively like a productivity bonus to them because this appears to me to be putting things in and i think these are bits of asteroid it's putting them in and then taking them out and putting them on a belt there does not appear then to be anywhere that the crushers you know are being emptied in the sense of you know they're not the material is not being put on a belt what that could mean is that they can directly output on a belt. I can't really see where that would be happening, maybe here. 
but it could also be that they are directly linked to the platform storage. So it basically crushes the thing, puts them in the storage. You can take them out if you want to, but it also just directly puts the stuff in the storage. Um, and you can then take it out wherever you want to take it out. So you don't need to have ridiculous amounts of belts in order to crush the asteroid materials. We do have some different asteroid colors here. I say there is a lot in this. We do have some different asteroid colors here. We've got an orangey one, which would tend to be the copper, I think. And then this here, I think, is the silver, is, is iron, basically. So that's confirmation that this is how the different types of particles will be, you know, different types of outputs from the um, crushed uh, meteorites will be. And we also saw, I sorry, I didn't point it out. We saw here what these new structures are. So these guys are rocket turrets which is awesome um getting some new weapons and and um uh, military things was something that i was really hoping we would see in the new expansion and here it is confirmation of rocket turrets they appear to have a very similar operation to the other turrets in that they the bit lifts up and then it opens up the two rocket pods, which are very similar to the ones on the Spidertron. And then rockets fly out, basically. These are regular rockets, I think. They do look different to me, but I've never really sat and watched the rockets play, you know, like videoed the rockets and seen them. They do look a little visually different. So I'm wondering if maybe there is a special space rocket of some way, because the way rockets work in real life, of course, uh, well, you can do thrust vectoring, but the way rockets work or missiles work in, in real life um, is, of course, that they are just a thruster at the back um, and then they use the air passing over them like a plane in order to direct them and, and, and alter their course. So if you're in space, there is no air. So you need to do either as a thrust vectoring or you need to have thrusters on the sides in order to change your direction. So that appears to be... Um, kind of ignored basically in the game which you would expect but i'm wondering if there is therefore a special space rocket that allows you to nominally control it in space and maybe is perhaps a bit cheaper so that you can make them on on the platform okay so we've got lots of grabber arms going on as well um reaching out and grabbing the rocks that have been destroyed this one this blue one here is the uh, ice watery one i believe and as we know all this mechanics from the previous right effects where it breaks them down into smaller and smaller bits and uh and you know grabs the bits for, from the um, space and, and brings them into the platform they do all have an output so i'm thinking that means that you have to put them onto a belt and then they go to the crushers but the crushers can then put the crushed resources so the raw iron or raw copper or raw coal uh, or carbon rather into the platform directly is, is how i think it might work we do also see these little these little um like tiny meteorites i think they're just you know the equivalent of decoratives i don't think they mean anything or do anything but they will also they will show you that your platform is moving because obviously you'll have the star field but one of the things that can easily get lost you know if you just have a you know a black star field type you know situation is whether or not the platform is even moving because you know particularly as it mentions and and if we are able to control the thrusting if it's pushed itself along it's it's moved forward and then those engines cut off without the clouds and the, the little um, bits of type, you know, micrometeorites flying past, you wouldn't be able to see that the thing was moving, basically. Okay, so then what happens is we get the first look. I wonder if that one's... Oh, I couldn't see it. I was hoping that they might, <laughs> might cross in front of it, but because I can't really sh definitely show you the, the coal ones, but there are lots of the coal black ones floating around. But anyway, what happens next is we get our first glimpse of one of the gigantic asteroids now this i'm looking at it appears maybe to be metallic because it's sort of silvery but if we look at the colors of it interestingly and I, this is one of my speculation points that i've had before that perhaps these massive meteorites the really big ones or asteroids or i suppose it's a better term but one of you know these big space rocks have other resources in them so they're not just metal or just water or just coal that when you break them up you get other things perhaps out of them and if you look at the coloring we've got yellow like sulfur we've got um the purpley stuff that we thought was was maybe tungsten we've got the sort of pinky one that might be holmium um, so i'm wondering as i say as a previous speculation maybe these big asteroids 
you get more stuff out of them. Now, we can't really confirm that because unfortunately this platform fails to destroy this asteroid. Because the asteroid crashes in and then disappears. I hope they fix that or do something about that because that looks naff. <laughs> I just say it. I hope we get some kind of proper animation of the asteroid crushing itself in together or, you know, something like that. And it doesn't just hit the platform and disappear because that's a bit naff. Uh, but what we do see here is uh, the dynamic rebuilding of the platform. So these entities here have all taken damage. The platform itself then rebuilds itself. And this is our first look at it properly doing that in game rather than just the concept art. So it builds these out, reconstructs them. There's no bots doing any of this. And here we see some more rocket turrets flying off. There's no bots doing this. They just um, build up and it expands out automatedly, self-building. Looks absolutely amazing. I say the, the, the meteorite just disappearing is naff. The rebuilding part is absolutely awesome. I love that. Now, just poking at the bottom here is some sulfur. Okay. I can't work out... Well, we'll go through and see if I can work it out this time. I can't work out where it's coming from, basically. Um, you see, basically, because we've got this gigantic sp spaghetti belt, what they're using the sulfur for is they're using it along with the carbon, so it looks like there's a tweaked recipe that allows us to do this, in order to make these rockets, because what you need to make a rocket is the explosives, okay? So they're having to manufacture the explosives on the platform. That's why we've got chemical labs, because it's the chemical labs that make the explosives. But where is this coming from, this sulfur? Because we've got this belt here, okay? And I say, this is why I can't work out what's going on, because we have this gigantic tangle of, of belts going all over the place, with some undergrounds doing, you know, where belts should be and all of this sort of stuff. So is this sulfur coming from these crushers is sulfur being taken from the crushers and put on is that what's going on if not where is that sulfur coming from because the belt uh, kind of loops itself back around here so that the uh, things can pick it up this crusher uh, sorry this uh, chemical lab only takes out of this crusher okay so what's it making is it making the carbon because I don't see where is that coming from? No, so I can't work out with the spaghetti where it's coming from because you've got an underground here that's clearly filtering off the sulfur because it's on the right side of the belt, which is that side there, and that's what's coming off of there. That's being fed by this one, which comes out of here, and it only seems to be coming out of the crusher. Now, what it could be, could be a more simple explanation, is that these act as sort of chests, in a sense. The crushers, what they've done is they've put a load of sulfur into the platform before it's set off, when it's refueled it and what have you, with sulfur, restocked it rather, and that the crushers are just a really convenient way of taking out the material, because you need to use them anyway, and therefore they can just get the sulfur out of the thing. The other option, as I say, is that, for example, those gigantic asteroids have sulfur in them, and that they're blowing up the, the, the gigantic asteroids in order to grab the sulfur from them, and that they can then use the sulfur to make the rockets. Difficult to tell what's going on, as I say, because I can't quite interpret it. And if you know what's going on, or you've worked out what's going on, do please shout and let me know in the comments, because, because yeah, it appears to be quite mad. <laughs> What is definitely going on is that we have foundries on the platform. Let's run it on a little bit. So we can run foundries from the platform. Now, we do know it's got you know a, a nuclear power plant on it, but this is confirmation, I guess, that you, you can run... It's not just assemblers, not just chemical plants, but the new buildings, I assume all the new buildings, can be run in space, which is awesome. <laughs> this is effectively a, a, a massive floating platform. Uh, floating, um, factory basically which is just amazing a few more solar panels on the side here as i say these appear to be making the rockets because we've got the rockets being output onto this belt here as gigantic stacks uh, loading on the side here and that's the one that goes up uh, to re refill them so if these are making the actual rockets uh, then these are making must be making the actual um uh, so I was just trying to work out what the, or remember essentially what the rocket recipe is. Um, and this is the actual machines making the rockets. They involve green circuits, iron plate, 
and then explosive. An explosive is water, sulfur, and and coal, basically. So that's obviously what's going on here. These guys, I think, are grabbing... What would they be grabbing in order to make a fluid that comes out of there? Because the actual rockets require... so No, so this is the explosive, isn't it? Because it's taking in the sulfur. It doesn't have coal there, but that could just be because it's not on the belt. I mean, they're not running, so it might just be missing the coal. I've got one inserted there dumping stuff out. And it's obviously circuit controlled. So these could be making... So clearly you need water in order to make explosives. So this could be the water feeding. So these could simply be melting. Maybe they're doing... Oh, maybe it's this one. I don't know. It feels like there's a slight tweak to the recipe for rockets to me. Because they're obviously taking in... There doesn't, there doesn't seem to be any green circuits, for example. Maybe that one's making green circuits. No, that one's making ammo, isn't it? Because that's its output. Where's that one coming from? Well, that's all iron plate. So this is just all stacked up iron plate. And that's coming out the foundries. This one also is making iron plates. So this one could be the green circuits. No, that's ammo again, isn't it? That's regular ammo because that's its output there. So I say they don't appear to be green circuits. So maybe that's a, a change. Because only, these guys only have inserters putting stuff in. Because what's coming out is the rockets there. So they're only grabbing from this belt, which appears to be just pure iron. Iron plate, rather. And from there which uh, would be the explosives, I would guess, because we're, they're reaching for sulfur and maybe coal if it was on that belt. This could be how, how it's making water, or it could be that you have to convert carbon into coal and that it puts the coal in that way. That would make some sense, wouldn't it? And that perhaps there's just this one, maybe, and maybe that inv recipe involves water as well. And maybe this one, where it's grabbing out the crusher, is just taking the water ice and that's melting water ice, turning it into water. So these then guys then have sulfur and uh, coal, which you've converted from carbon. They then put it into these machines, which make the rockets, and they have iron plate there. So as I say, what's missing is the green circuits from the normal recipe. So perhaps there is this simpler space rocket that doesn't have a green circuit on it. Maybe. We've got chunks of ice here coming out of the crusher, going up there. What we do have here is, I think that's the alternate material, isn't it? Hmm. I'm wondering if that is not using the liquid iron recipe. Because this, what would there, where, how is that coming out? I say, if you, I say, if you, if you've worked this out, and you know where everything is going, do please drop a comment and let me know, because the belt spaghetti is just a bit confusing here for me, especially not knowing the recipes. Because I think that's the, I can't remember what it was called, the additional res resource on Vol Volcanus that was the, the just sort of rock stuff. And I think that's coming out of there, being put into this. So it's being taken off of a belt here. This belt appears to come... from nowhere because it sort of loops itself around is it coming out of the crusher so maybe the big asteroids have everything in them you know they've got some of the whatever it's called the oh, i can't remember that that other um sort of stone type recipe this for this um foundry is converting it into liquid iron and then these foundries are then converting in that liquid iron into iron plate basically that's what i think might be going on there so effectively that is melting the iron ore because there's iron ore here and this filter looks like it's probably or the, you know this is probably controlling what's going where essentially but it's certainly it's got a load of combinators on it it's you know doing something fancy but we'll just let it play out because to say this platform is like oh this one's actually running because it looks like it's basically symmetric it's not quite but not far off because this looks very similar to this, but it's too small, you see. Yeah, I think that's making liquid iron, and they're converting it into iron plate. But yeah, look at this bad boy. And I'm sure you can build things much, much bigger than this. I don't think there is actually a limit to how big you can build things, but there's like a practical limit in the sense that you could only fit, you know, so many engines on it. It's like power to weight ratio, I think, that basically will give us a maximum size. 
Okay then, so a bit of speculation on this. We don't see too much that we didn't either know about or have seen already. There was a kind of a confirmation at one point of these. This here is is fire that a hazard on Folgoris up to a hazard on Volcanus, I believe, is fire. So if you're getting these trees, you know, sparking into fire, it can potentially damage things. I think is the idea. A bit like I mean, the trees do on Navis. That's not a new mechanic, but these can spontaneously combust. Is I believe the idea. Um, I might have got confused about that. Though. Uh, what we do here is sweep across. We're getting the yellow noxious things here we're getting the sulfur fumaroles going on and then we get confirmation as we sweep across here the new you know the new mechanics of the you know the, the walls as it were look really great i think really well integrated into the game uh, but as we come across here eventually it's quite these are quite big these sulfur fields you know, we get this here. And again, I think the idea of this is that the fires can start fires, as it were. Um, I may be completely wrong on that, but I think that's the idea that this, you know, can potentially start set something on fire. Yeah, so these, these do look great. And it is interesting seeing the two different types, basically. So we've got the... I don't know what you call these X mountain, X volcano ones, I think, and the actual cliffs. And the glowy under, you know, that's really atmospheric, isn't it? I hope, does that sort of flicker? You can't really tell. I hope it does, like there's lava underneath. Anyway, what we see here coming in is the new elevated rail, which is clearly a really useful thing on uh, Volcanus with all of its hazardous lava pits and that you can't build on. But what we also see is that you use regular pump jacks to mine up the sulfur fumaroles, basically. And then it comes out as this, this I believe it's like hot sulfuric acid, basically, because what you can do is you can make steam with it, I believe. Um, we've then got the big mining drills, mining up the, the tungsten. We're also seeing here, I think, for the first time, this is what the tungsten ore is going to look like. It could still be placeholder, I guess, but this is clearly quite like game because these are stacked pieces of, of tungsten. Uh, it's the green belt, or well, uh, again, which they, I think they're just showing off more than anything because, you know, <laughs> you sort of, you're going to get a sort of a trade-off, a weird trade-off where stacked belts, if you can't support, you know, 240, you know, stacked pieces of material, actually, it's probably going to be better to use yellow belt because there's kind of no you're getting the like parallel bonus rather than the series bonus effectively so where you might have four you know yellow belts and you'd come along and say right i want to just have one blue belt and it you know takes the same material you know for space reasons actually maybe if you stack the items up and you've got a blue belt or a green belt actually maybe taking it down because then you can go and use your really expensive green belt somewhere more useful but but yeah that's a just a random thought now we see this train flowing it through here and look what this has got on it this has got the artillery piece on it so at the very least what to me that is confirming is that there is uh, there are biters on this planet i guess they could be using the artillery thing to move shells around and they're putting them on a space platform and sending them somewhere else i very much doubt that i think this is telling us yep there is definitely an enemy on volcanus uh, that requires artillery that would suggest it has fixed emplacements because the artillery is pretty useless against moving enemies and that to me says that this is biters on the planet in some way or other possibly worms of course it could be we know there's or we think there's a red worm that's on volcanoes so it could be sh for shooting worms but certainly we know now we have a reason unless it's a red herring uh, we have a reason that we would need artillery on this planet Nice long train with mixed carriages. Um, and yet more of the pump jacks. Now, what we've got here is, uh, I think this is the lava processing. I don't know if it actually quite shows it properly, but you see here we've got a pump. Uh, we've got an offshore pump on the bottom. Interestingly, it's sat on some concrete. So I don't know if that means that maybe the surface is going to be difficult. You might have to like landfill it or something like that and put concrete on it to in order to put the pump on but what appears to be coming in here is i think the lava because what this foundry is doing 
is making the well it's making the the other one i think there's actually two things coming out of here there's the stone and the actual one of the resources i think oh no it's putting the stone in isn't it what's it putting out then because it looked to me like it, this was the output hmm what's that actually doing then? Because this one here is making, or I guess it must be making iron, because that is linked to this through mad spaghetti, mad pipe spaghetti. That's linked to this one, and this one is clearly making these gears. I'm doing a bit of belt sushi. These are the bits of ore coming in. I guess they're being fed into this machine, maybe. I just because this this belt this you know this inserter is just sat here with a bit of stone on it, so we can't really tell what it's doing. But the pipes appear to be coming out, and the blue stuff is iron, you know, liquid iron we know, and the the orange stuff is the liquid copper, which is going into that tank there. So perhaps it's using this. I'd sort of assumed it was sending the same stuff. Let's see if we can find it. So maybe that isn't the tungsten, but yeah, because whatever it's ironing up here. It's putting into this machine, isn't it? Oh, no, that's outputting. Those inserters are outputting. So they, they, this is just like some mad, mad sushi belt, basically, because it's just putting the stone out onto the belt, as w which has already got the... Which maybe explains why it's green belt. Already got the, the ore on it. It's then smelting some of the iron, or extracting some of the iron, some of the copper. The offshoot is the, the stone. Excuse me. All of this sushi stuff, stone, iron, uh, sorry, tungsten, or and iron gear wheels comes down here. Oh no, it's not the tungsten, is it? Because the purple one was the tungsten. Obviously, we don't know. We've not been told, sort of thing. But that must be the. Ah, uh, I've got them mixed up. So that's calcite. So the stuff that's being mined up here is calcite. So the first ones, this lighter color is the calcite basically. So that's what's being put on this belt here. Calcite is then used in this recipe. So one of the, yeah, that inserter at the back there, I think is going in rather than out. But calcite is then used in this um, iron copper separation lava processing recipe, but and the out, output is stone. It's also used in the sulfuric acid neutralization. Um, so I don't know if see we see a split because these we don't see where these pipes go, I don't think. But basically that is used in that there. So the stone and calcite is coming round. We've then got the tungsten being put on the belt here. More big mining drills. And that's all going over here. And we get into all of these videos could be used as new trailers, to be honest with you. I, I hope they do multiple trailers with the thing because it could really be... Get, really get some awesome visuals going on. But yeah, so the, the stone is being separated there uh, for processing. But then I say we're getting mad belt spaghetti, basically. Oh, you've got steel there. That looks like more tungsten. That looks like stone or calcite maybe being dumped into the lava. We've got what I assume is the copper metal, you know, liquid copper, liquid thing. It's interesting, again, that that is on a concrete sort of plinth, basically. So I don't know if... You know, that's something you need to do because uh, these are as well. Or it's just something you know, this player's done to make it look a bit tidier or what have you. Uh, but yes, we've got, I guess that's more calcite being mined up there. That comes around there. Do, 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 do. We've got more you know, copper and iron, liquid copper and iron being processed, moved around, to be turned into steel here. And yeah, that's just clearly being dumped into the, the lava. More mining there. So yeah, not too much new on that, other than the kind of revelation that this is going to be an absolutely awesome planet. Um, and fitting this in to the spaces you've got, you know, when you're not doing uh, landfilling, because I think that's what's gone on here, because this looks like the, the natural formation, the natural generation was that this is continuous and then they've landfilled across that part because you can't underground um, through through the lava lake but you notice we've got an underground going on there so once you've put down the landfill lava landfill you can underground across that but basically yes yeah, so that's been added on now i'm i'm guessing that when you do that lava landfill 
it puts in this you know it has this surface to it so it's like free concrete as well maybe i don't know but yeah so we've got all sorts of sort of tungsten moving around i'm trying to work out whether we've got anything kind of new going on any new materials but it's a bit too small to see that so yeah so not too much review new there uh, just a few more details and confirmations of, of interesting little bits and pieces as well as me getting confused over which was calcite and which was tungsten right then speculation about this is going to be very difficult there is clearly an awful lot here but because it's dark it's the nighttime storm part of the game you know part of the Falgora planet it's really difficult to see what's going on and I don't really have the time, right? You know, doing this video to kind of max up the contrast or any of that stuff. It's like we are seeing here, for example, the, I mean, at the very bottom, I'm sure it's, it's showing the, the 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 bar. But these are the electromagnetic, whatever they're called, refineries or what have you. Um, it's clearly inputting a lot of stuff into them. I can't really tell what it is. I'm pretty sure these are blue circuits, so it's putting blue circuits in. But I can't see, it's not close enough and not, you know, distinct enough to see what's on these other three belts. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I, this appears to be the scrap. So I think this is a scrap patch, for example. Again, you can't, you can't really see on a lot of this. There's lots of the accumulatory, I think these are the level one ones. I'm not 100% sure, but of the lightning rods. So clearly you need to put those quite close together to get proper and effective coverage. They appear to connect wirelessly, I think, to the rest of the system. So it's, you know, if it's harvesting the charge out of these, it seems to be doing so wirelessly, I think. Uh, we've then got, again, loads of machines. It's kind of bonkers how many machines there are here. So I don't know if that means that this recipe is staggeringly slow. I think it does. But also that perhaps, how to phrase it, this machine is like, this factory is actually stopped because there doesn't appear to be a lot of movement of the assemblers that I can tell. So it's really difficult to see in the dark. But I'm wondering if this factory is effectively not doing anything because it's maybe out of power. We'll see some accumulators later on that don't have uh, any crackly lines on them, which means I believe they're dead. I always get a bit mixed up as to what's showing where, because it could mean that they're fully charged as well. But I say this factory doesn't appear to be doing anything. I'm not sure if this is an error with the belt or if these guys have just eaten it all. But whatever's on this belt, so somewhere here, stops at this here. So I don't know if there's an accidental piece of belt backwards. But uh, oh no, it's going the other way, isn't it? So that's the output. Again, it's so difficult to see. That's the output, and these are doing more output, I think. Because the leg feet are such that it's pointing outwards. But yeah, you could probably work out what the recipes are or for this sort of thing. But because I don't, is this steel that's on the bottom here and concrete, blue circuits and gears, maybe? What what would that be producing? I don't know. But so I don't really even know if that's what it is because it's so dark and dingy. What is clear is that whatever's been output on this belt... Um, and maybe that one as well there's clearly a lot of colour variation to it because you've got lots of green ones, there's a red one a blue one, I think there's a pinkish one in there, so whatever it's outputting appears to have a fairly randomised colour colour palette. Uh, we do also see here, I believe this is the landfilling of oil thing, so these, uh, you know, accumulators all appear, you know, I think this one's taking in charge for example, these accumulatory uh lightning rod things all appear to be on you know this concrete here because they're just trying to you know like you do with a factory just trying to repeat your patterns over and over again um, and i think from looking at this shape these are probably you know the entry and exit points to the the landfill you know to the plateau basically and that this is the landfilling slash concrete thing that we're going to get in order to fill this in because this one here appears to have gone in you know the natural pattern of it the map generation is that it's in like that and so that has all been landfilled or concreted or whatever it is same here that one goes in there uh, there's a little bit there and that one goes in there and across there in order to let them just build longer and longer and longer so we can't see the recipes there's no alt mode on but here we have lots of blue circuits i mean like a ridiculous number of blue circuits because these are stack inserters the new stack inserter um so there's an insane amount of uh, blue circuits which i don't know that 
to, seems to me to suggest that blue circuits are going to be because they're a really high cost you know really difficult to produce in huge volumes items but of course it looks like the base is just dead and sat there doing nothing so it could just be that all the belts have backed up yeah these appear to be balancers i believe these are balancers i think but could be something else um, you know they're doing some sort of buffering here with what i think as i say is steel but really difficult to see lots of lightning strikes coming in again more strips of this concrete stuff um, and they're doing a sort of a, a main bus I think this is some sort of holmium thing because of the colour. Again, really difficult to tell. But this is all sushi here. So I'm suspecting... I mean, I think... It's so difficult to tell on this. I'm going to have to do some fiddling about, see if I can, like, you know, high contrast some of the images and stuff like that. But I think this is a, like a whole set of recyclers. So the implication to me... Now, are those the outputs or the inputs? Because the recycler puts on a belt, you see. It'll output directly onto a belt. So are these... And they're also flipped, which is interesting because that confirms that we're going to be able to flip more than just chemical plants and, and refineries because these are clearly mirror images of each other. And I think this like whole bit is where it outputs. You know, the factory isn't running. So I don't know. I'm wondering if maybe this is... It's spitting out, you know, because the recycler is, you know, takes in the scrap. So maybe that's what's coming in on this belt that's multicolored. But then why is it also being put into all these various assemblers? And what the heck is that? I don't know. You see, it's all just dead. So you can't really tell what it's doing in a sense. But yeah, this all just sort of stops here for some reason. I don't know why it doesn't. You know, why is that underground not moving material across? You know, because the, these these undergrounds should be... Because this is just like a splitter filtering thing. This is saying, right, send those this way and send those that way. And these are all just then stopped and all the belts are just empty. Even though there's material set on the belts. So I don't really know what's going on here. Because we can't see it controlling it with um, circuit networks. So I don't know. We'll then come into a gigantic rocket field. Obviously, I don't know what's being sent here, but I'm assuming the color number, the colored lights mean it's full or not. You know, that this is a full one and this has only got, you know, whatever that be, 20% or whatever. Um, it could just be nice and pretty, but I would assume that's indicating the fullness. Uh, again, this is another confirmation that regular beacons are just, are just you know, staying in the game. There's nothing changing there. These are all circuit network controlled. That's what that is. And we've got some requested chests pulling stuff in here and, and here. What I'm assuming one of the things this is pulling in is the actual material to build the rockets. So it'll be, you know, your low density structures, your blue circuits, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but presumably this is also a, the method for sending stuff off planet. So once you've got your millions of blue circuits, you want to send them to Nalvis or something. So you stick them in a rocket and you send it up to platform and off they go. And that, that's what's going on here. But again, difficult to tell without it really running. Um, again, we've got this splittery, you know, filtery thing, but it's stopped for some mysterious reason. More, and it looks like the same exact sort of structure again. There are a ridiculous number of robot ports um, later on. Something going on here. I think these are recyclers again, but the material has been brought in by a robot. We've got loads and loads of the electromagnetic machine there. It does appear to have the arm on it. So yeah, I thought I'd uh, just kind of nip over to the other one. Because I remember seeing this. There was the Christmas teas. And there was, it had what looked like a mysterious arm on this machine. I wonder if I can pull that one up. Yeah, so in this this image here, this, um, you know, sort of teasy picture we had of the, you know, with the Christmas tree on it and stuff like that. Um, this I, I'd identified as the electromagnetic building, uh, as we know, now know it. But that it had this weird arm in front of it, because that wasn't on the original, uh, like, um, graphic that we'd seen which was obviously just the icon and then when we saw them in this this video what i hadn't twigged and maybe everyone else had realized it but so well i 
it didn't have the arm on it basically so i was a bit stumped as to what was going on but if you notice there's this little there's this thing here and i think that's the arm that i'm talking about so that bit there i think extends basically so what we're seeing on this image is that arm extended across now what i'm wondering is that maybe that arm extends across when it loses power so if the machine is stopped that arm is meant to represent sort of the you know the, the swirling you know the rotating mechanism being you know clamped as it were so that it doesn't can't turn around by accident and that then maybe therefore effectively the animation is synchronized so you'd see all these machines running at the same time was it like that on the other one no so those are running at different times aren't they i wonder if it runs rotates at the speed of whatever recipe it's doing maybe but yeah i'm wondering if that arm thing basically is something that attaches on is there something that could be an attach point difficult to tell isn't it the detail on these is still amazing it's just staggering when i see them so yeah, there might be some point here where it can connect in and basically like stop the machine effectively. But yeah, it's interesting that these are stop machines and you know they don't have and they have the arm across, which is what I spoke before. So we've got even more scrap processing. And here we go, here's this bot um, thing. We see a couple of logistics bots fly over. This part of the factory is running. It's not completely dead. We then see a, a, a really big um, power you know, area. Um, we've got um, you know some boilers with requested chests, which I assume we're requesting you know, coal, basically. Uh, burnable material. This is processing water. We know that water's another. It's another planet with a rare, rare water on it. Now, one of the things that is noticed, because I, I questioned whether. There's this mechanic on Fogora where the oil sands are hazardous to certain, well, to everything, basically. Because if you can see up here, this um, substation is built on that concrete landfill stuff. Yeah, the pipes can just connect into the, you know, to the heavy oil that it extracts from the oil sand. Um, and we know that the, even though it's slightly bonkers, the elevated rail can be placed on the, the oil sands. Everything else will sink into the oil sands, including vehicles, apparently. And I wondered whether that applied to Spidertron. Does Spidertron sink into the oil sand? But, and I don't know if this is confirmation or not, if it does, then it doesn't happen immediately because this Spidertron clearly walks several times, in fact, on the oil sand. So does that mean Spidertron is basically immune? You know, because I don't know, it's weight spread out or something. Or does that mean that you get a grace period? You can put something down and then it takes a few minutes or a few seconds or what have you before it starts to take damage. And that vehicles, maybe you could drive across in a tank, but it will slowly take damage. And then when it, instead of blowing up, it sinks into the sand because we haven't seen what those animations might look like. So, see, so yeah, I'm interested to see. Uh, but basically, this Spidertron does skirt onto the oil sand, so it doesn't appear to be immediately damaged by that, because um, we don't see a damage bar up here. We've then got the uh, foundries here. These appear, from what I can tell, to be processing something that... Would that be iron? I mean, it could just be iron plate, couldn't it? I really can't tell <laughs> with the, with the colouring. But I thought this might be the... You know one of the new materials basically that they're actually processing holmium or tungsten or something like that but we we can't really tell now it's got to be because of the dinginess of it but this looked to me like a new chest but i think it's just because it's so dark and horrible maybe it's a buffer chest or something like that because that's the blue for a requested chest and that is not the same blue i think i don't know or is it maybe it is I don't, it just looks different to me. That's Those are requested chests, and that looks slightly different to me. But what else would it be? It could be a buffer chest, is what I'm thinking. Uh, and it's just difficult to tell. Because this, again, that looks like a different colour to me compared to that. But it could just be a buffer chest. There's no there's no new, new chest. It's just because it's so dark and dingy, you can't really tell that it's green, basically. But yeah. Well, then these guys are producing this pink fluid that we think is the super... You know, super capacitor. But again, I'm seeing, you know, that's that's definitely a buffer chest. 
Maybe it's just, well, no, it's got the RoboPort thing on it. I don't know. I say it's just, maybe it's just because it's so dark and dingy that you can't tell. And But I say that doesn't, that I think is a buffer chest. Is that the same colour as that? You tell me. And I, I really mean that. Please tell me. <laughs> what do you think? Is that a new chest? And what might it be if it is a new chest? I say I think it's just because you know the vigils, and it's it's either just a requester or or a you know a buffer basically. Well, this is clearly quite a big factory. It looks like some of the plateaus, as mentioned, are really quite big. So you know we shouldn't be too worried about. Um, I mean, because look at the size of this rocket launching area. So yeah, so there there is clearly a lot going on in this image. And I, I'm going to, you know, sort of try and look at it myself and see if I can see stuff and maybe play about with contrast and all that sort of stuff. But I can't see what most of it is because it's too, too dark, too dingy. Nothing's running. So, yeah, it's difficult to see what's going on here. But I'm sure there'll be a lot coming out as to what, you know, what people have spotted, basically. Hope you enjoyed today's Friday Facts video and might consider coming back for another one. If you'd like to chat about the latest Factorio Friday effects, then you can find me live streaming Factorio every Saturday and Sunday over on my Twitch channel, Actress Resistance. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Enjoy my ginger biscuits.